do it. Nice. I realized I, today that I goofed on that because I don't think I ever told the rest of the team, unfortunately. So I need to send a, an email out and get everybody on the same page. Okay. okay with that. We could do a little little talk show thing with it where uh, since we've always wanted to do some sort of podcast thing where we just uh, get yeah, get a couple of us. I, I'd say make it sort of a year in review kind of thing where we, we get on and talk about some of our favorite moments or stuff with iRacing and just kind of shoot the shit. And then we do the drawing after, you know, maybe half an hour or something. to get tired of the beautiful sunset here down in Brazil, especially with a, a race getting ready to take place. But these drivers don't really have time to look at all the wonderful sunlight, the orange glow bouncing off of the walls of the surrounding buildings. Instead, they have got to be focused on the car ahead. If there is any, it will be very difficult with the large field to try and come away. But today we get ready to watch round one of Big C's MX-5 Challenge here at uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. 
and we'll see who can come away with it. I'm your host, Joe Peak. With me in the booth, joining me in just a bit, will be Justin Prince with Sean Ambrose, our director behind the scenes. And as always, Dougie Beard is our camera provider back there, setting everything up that you get to see. Well, we talked about the beauty of this place, but uh, we only get to see shots right now here during the sunset as the sun goes down. So let's take a look at it under different conditions with a bunch of other cars with our track guide. Welcome to Autodromos Jose Carlos Pache. Most fans and drivers simply know this place as Interlagos. Starting life is an absolute behemoth of a circuit. This Brazilian track was eventually truncated to the version you see today. Having hosted Formula One for roughly three decades, it's become very well known on the international stage. But it has also held rounds in the World Endurance Championship, as well as frequently seen Brazilian stock cars, motorcycles, and even truck racing. There's little difference between its two layouts, which includes the GP course and the moto course, which simply adds a chicane to the end of the lap. In both cases, it's a tale of two circuits. The run past the start-finish line and into the Cine S, followed by the blast towards the De Cita de Lago, are very high-speed sections that come back-to-back. -back. Drivers will need to focus on top end in order to attack or defend. Expect most passes to happen in those two corners. But from Ferradura until Juchao, the track suddenly twists itself into a mess of hairpins and frustratingly technical turns. This can make car setup a real compromise, and for the latter part of the lap, an absolute pain when dealing with traffic. Pit exit is also a narrow affair, so it requires drivers to take care when trying to maximize their outlaps. On the upside, with this being a modern F1 track, there's paved runoff in abundance at many of the fast corners. The passion of the Brazilian fans always comes out in force at races, and it's no wonder with this picturesque track sandwiched right amongst the neighborhoods of Sao Paulo. You see a little bit more about the track, but let's get into the nitty gritty uh, about how these cars are going to be driving around here. These little MX fives. Uh, it is 15 corners around about two and a half miles. That's 4.3 kilometers on this layout. There's only two to choose from here on iRacing, actually. And uh, it takes a while to get around. But as with a lot of cars, this is split into two halves, this circuit, this Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache. You can see the run up from the junction to the start finish line. Very long, very fast. You've got that little break up with the Senna S and the Curva de Sol. Then another long run down into the Cidas de Lago. From there, it gets very technical. It can be easy to overheat the tires through this portion of the track. The infield with its left, right, left, right, multiple hairpins to take you through. Drivers will have to watch out for that, but they will get a chance to try and stay with the driver ahead if they can keep with the draft and keep pace in that infield. So keep an eye on the drivers and how they fare on the opposing sides of this interesting course. But let's get uh, to the rest of the pre-race show, which is brought to you by GTR Simulators Countdown to Green. GTR racing simulators are currently used as training aids for professional race car drivers. You too can learn to ace that braking, sharpen those corners, and shave off those vital seconds. Whether you're a professional driver or a gamer looking for a more immersive way to play, GTR has your back. Get started today at gtrsimulator.com. Let's take a look now, of course, at the Drivers' Championship, which we are in the midst of. Logan Clampett chasing down Robert Hartley has only eight points between them for the top spot. But look at Helme Dalmasas Torres and Clifford Eben. Just two points separating second to fourth. Uh, obviously, that is a very, very tight fight between them. And they could yet overtake Robert Hartley, depending on how his uh, remaining races go. We're seeing Fazui a little bit farther behind down in fifth, of course. Now, if you've never watched Big C's before, of course, we have some race details to go over. We are in round four out of ten. They have two drop weeks uh, just in case they have bad races or they have to go do something. It is close to the holiday season, so drivers might have to go and be with family. The races themselves are 40 minutes in length and the setups on the cars are fixed. Everybody's running the same setup, so there's really no advantage to be gained there. They have an incident cap, however, 20 incidents and will be disqualified. There's a number of paved runoffs at this track, so you can rack those up easily in these 40 minutes. And the points go from only 1st to 15th 
considering we have, uh, let's see, about 50 drivers here today, yeah, uh, you're going to be hard pressed to try and accrue those points. It's going to be very, very difficult to try and get to within scoring positions. Right now, we are covering qualifying. And uh, it looks like up at the top, Robert Hartley's not faring too badly as he is got in his first two laps, the top position. It looks like he's ducked back in, gotten uh, some fresh tires and has come back out for one final run to see what he can do on this fourth lap. We're right on board with the uh, Carolina driver right now. Between himself and second place, there's about a tenth and a half between uh, Robert and Juan Fernandez, who's on the outside of the front row. The number 91's got some work to do, but remember, it is about a two minute lap around here, just under two minutes long. So uh, that uh, just over a 10th of a second is a little bit understandable for these underpowered cars, especially since they're out there solo, trying to get those laps in and you can't pull a draft on someone. Hartley's last lap is his quickest. It's a 53-118. Make that three tenths back to Fernandez. And he just finished his qualifying. He does not improve. I see Yoni Hagner is still out there right now. He's just taking his third lap. He sits in fourth. He is the best position currently to try and overtake that first spot now that Hartley is done. So starting his final lap, the number 42, what can Hagner do? We're used to seeing him in a little bit higher powered car, not necessarily more grip though. Uh, he's usually running in the Audi uh, GTO, the Audi 90, which is a much older car, four wheel drive and the old M suspect race car. So we now head over to, uh, I believe this is uh, eighth place with Nico Arvalomi. Looks like he is going to abandon his lap Going to look at uh, Kellerman, who also is finishing his. Looking to see who's close to finishing their lap. Looks like uh, James Sharp is coming around. Although now that I look at his lap times, he's taken all four. So he should either be just practicing, which, yeah, he's going to take some warm-up laps here in the final three minutes as he continues on. Uh, Lekovic also working his way around, sitting down in the 15th spot. That was his most recent and fourth final lap of 154.6. Not his quickest. He set uh, his best on his second lap around. Jean-Francois Pignot, his best is 12th. As we also look at Gunovic, who's yet to set a time. So he has certainly got to hope. Uh, actually, you know what? He's taken all four of his laps, and all four of his laps did not count. Wow, Maxim is going to have some hard work to do from there. Let's take a look at yet Hagner, because he's coming around to finish that final lap. The Finn is up to and through the Subidos Dos boxes across the line. He's got to improve by a fair bit to take the pole, and he does not. So he stays in that fourth position. See if anybody else is able to finish laps. Look like Clifford Eben, number 55. He said his quickest on his second lap. He's going to be able to finish this one, which does not count. At about 2.14 left, he will be able to take this fourth and final lap. He sits in sixth place, and he is about, looks like, uh, let's see, he is roughly... Uh, hard to tell because I'm not getting a gap to the leader on my time and in scoring to see exactly how far away he is. Actually, no, here it is. It looks like he's four tenths behind Robert Hartley. That's about half a second. That's a significant amount for him to try and gain. One of our back markers there. Uh, Shoichi Ishimuro. Currently qualified in 43rd. And I'm not sure that he's going to be able to complete his fourth lap. Nick Berger. Also coming across the line to finish up there. Second to see who of our front runners are able to uh, take a fourth lap because very few of them are still out there. Seeing if uh, Savoy can get another one in. Looks like he's also going to abandon it as he's already finished his. I think the only driver left that, uh, well, I thought Clifford was going to be the only driver left to be able to take his fourth lap, but he's abandoned it. So Maxime, who, as we mentioned, uh, has already taken his four, isn't able to set a time. He'll have to start back there where he is. 
Looks like Fabian Ponce is going to be able to take his last lap. And I think that's the last driver to be able to take a time potentially here because we've only got 40 seconds left. Down in 46th position, as quickest as a 56-4. Can he go any quicker? No, he can't. That one did not count. Shoichi Ishimaru, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, not going to be able to get to the line in time. Potentially 20 seconds. It's a long run up the hill. Coimbra, who we're watching on screen, has already taken his four laps. So he's done for the day here in qualifying. Six seconds left yet. Shoichi's not going to make it. That means our grid is set. Let's go through your starting order for today. Robert Hartley is going to be on the pole with Juan Manuel Fernandez in second. Jaume Tomas Torres starts P3. Yoni Hagner starts fourth, and James Sharp will be on the inside of row three and fifth. Clifford Evan put it in sixth position in qualifying. Fernandez Busquet starts seventh, and Nico Arvalomi in eighth position. Christian Lindroth will be P9. Brandon Hawken in tenth. You get to row six, it's Artie Haro in eleventh. Then Jean-Francois Pignot starts P12. Rui Combra, 13th for him. Nicholas Berger managed 14th with Alexander Lukovic in the 15th spot. 16th goes to Kenny Brady. Travis Wallace starts 17th and Pedro Berger in 18th. Then Kuichi Kitamura starts in 19th position. Top 20 is rounded out by Julian Villaray. Corinth Dubois starts 21st. Then it's Owen Watson 22nd. Jonas Sager in third, 23rd. And Avdasik Butkabuti in 24th. Milan Radivojek in 25th, Alex Coffer starts 26th position. The next row has Alex Albert to the inside in 27th. Ryan Zabelski is 28th, and George Fike is 29th. Running out the first half of the field, it is Charles Kelly, man. That's going to be the first half of our grid. This is the second half that you see here on our screen, uh, as we've got 50 drivers, it looks like, in the session here today. It's going to be a very, very full field and Robert Hartley is going to lead them all down into turn one. So as you see, we wait for a few of them. wonder if any of them are going to elect to start from pit lane. You can see just how long it goes all the way around. So beat us those boxes for this standing start. As the uh, Sim Racing Studio brings you this starting grid. Big thanks to them for sponsoring that segment. Believe we are waiting on Olivia Rule to come out. The last driver, not sure that he's going to make it out. Yep, the lights are up. He'll start from the pit lane. Engine start to rev. Green flag is out as everybody tries to get off the line. Not a good one for Robert Hartley. Already Juan Fernandez to his inside. And he's got a nose ahead as they come down into turn one. He's going to take this lead away easily. Hartley has no response. Torres slots into third. Is everybody going to get through clean? A little bit of three wide in the mid pack. A little bumping and banging between some of them. Otherwise, they're able to keep the car straight. Nobody off and wrecked at the start, but we got a three wide for the lead as Fernandez already being challenged by Robert Hartley. Jaume Torres is looking behind. He backs out of it, makes sure that it's only two wide. Back up to the front. Oh, a shove to the behind for Fernandez. He goes all the way off course. This is going to allow Hagner to get into third position. So back up to the front goes Robert Hartley. Now with Jaume Torres challenging him. Had a bit of problems towards the back. I believe that was Jean-Francois uh, Pignot who went off course. One car incident. He gets it going once again. Meanwhile, the front of the field now into the twisty bits, the back and forth hairpins. A little bit off the apex for Robert Hartley while he tries to keep Palme Torres just behind him. Yoni Hagner in that third position, hungry to get himself up into the front spot. And how about this, Clifford Evan, he moves himself up into fourth with the problems we have with Juan Fernandez, who has now fallen all the way to fifth. Up to the junction they go. On a long run up to the start and finish line. What is the draft going to look like with these MX-5s? Is this going to be enough for Torres to maybe pull up into the front position? This is the first time they'll really get a feel for what it's like in race conditions here. 
And as they climb, he is not really gaining as much as I expected. We're right on board with our leader, Hartley. Instead, it looks like it's Yoni Hagner, the one who's close enough to maybe have an attempt at a pass. Let's see if we see that uh, Glacier car duck out. Oh, he thinks about it, but instead, Torres defends before he can get there. Oh, he gets a shot from behind. That is Clifford Eben getting into him as they all accordion together. Behind them, very clean with Eri Haro. Uh, leading the next group in eighth position. Got a challenge for what looks like fifth place as uh, Nico Arvelomi, this is for fifth place rather, uh, gets past Juan Fernandez there and that group. So Fernandez falling from second at the start and even the lead temporarily down to sixth position. This is not the way he's been wanting this to go. First lap is done. Your leader is Hartley. Tor is second. Hagner third. Eben fourth. They're starting to break away from the group behind as they continue to battle. Here you can see the orange car of Arvalomi still leading Fernandez, holding him off through the horseshoe. All of them behind getting extremely close according to together. Back up front, Torres uh, almost got passed by Hagner there, but he stays behind. Slowest corner on the course down through the Ducksbill. As they come up to the junction now. We saw a good run from Hagner and a little bit of a poke. What can he do this time? Can he get the launch off the turn? Not as good as Torres, who really gets himself tucked underneath the rear bumper of Robert Hartley. The 33 could be under threat. Fast water tower. Pass Subidos Dos Boxes. He gets to the inside. Interesting that there's no defense from Hartley to cover him off. Torres with a good enough run that he is going to get a nose ahead up to the first corner into the Senate S. Is Hagner going to try and get his nose into this? He's going to back out early. He's going to see how this plays out. Robert Hartley slots in behind in a second. He doesn't fight it. He lets Torres have the position. Just behind them, Arvalomi still dealing with Clifford Eben, but they are uh, managing to pull a small gap uh, to Fernandez behind them. I think Ariharo is off track. Ooh, and he's facing the wrong way. Number 35 banging into the barrier, trying to get it going once again. Let's take a look and see exactly what happened to him on the replay here down into the Senate S. No help, just... Uh, Started to get it turned around. Nobody touched him at all. That car behind him, Nicholas Berger in the orange and blue, did not make contact. You can see how long he had to wait, try and find an opening, get himself back in. Back up front, it is still Torres leading. Hartley Hagner stays in third. Nico Arvalomi in fourth has now caught them. So the front group has expanded. It is now Brandon Hawken in eighth, who is the tail of the train. That little bit of fighting brought them together that much. So far, we've only lost three cars. Kenny Brady, Owen Watts, and Olivia Verrol, who I think uh, Verrol was a did not start. 48 cars still running. They do have two spare cars in this series if they get too much damage. So I assume many of the drivers we've seen take some damage have since hopped in the pits and come back out. Back up to the front stretch. This time it's reversed. Hartley with the run. Hartley's not going to play the same game that Torres did. Instead, he's going to give them a little bit of a bump draft as they come up to the braking for the Senna S. Hagner stays behind, four still held by Arvalomi. Clifford Eben now in P5, having been overtaken by Arvalomi uh, in the last couple laps. Fernandez, who has stopped the bleeding finally in sixth position, is being trailed by Bousquet and Brandon Hawken. As we said, that gap starts behind them for the first time to Nicholas Berger down in ninth position. Bukabude. Down in 14th, seems to have uh, done much better than his qualifying seemed to imply. He's up to 14th, but he's kind of in no man's land. You can see he's that light blue car that has just kind of got nobody around him, but he could yet still run down uh, Julian Villaray, who is up in front of him in the number 40. So 
Looks like things are starting to calm down. We're used to seeing this in these sorts of MX-5 races. Maybe a little bit of franticness to try and sort themselves out at the start. But then everybody who knows how the game is played in these draft races up at the front kind of just gets single file. Nobody really fights too hard. The group continues to grow. Hawken has been caught by Berger, and I think Travis Wallace in 10th has even got the draft at this point. So they reel in uh, driver after driver on this group as they come out of the junction. There you see them coming steeply up the hill. They usually start these races very late in the day uh, with it being, let's see, it's about 7.30 p.m. virtual standard time. Uh, set in November is uh, this race. And usually it gets just about past sunset uh, by the time the race finishes in this 40-minute race. We will expect one pit stop up at the front. Change of the lead. Hartley gets right past Torres, and he reclaims the top spot. Interesting to note that you can see on your screen, Berger set the fastest lap of the race there. Had a little bit of swap positions farther down for 16th. Alex Albert overtaken by Maxim Bunovic. Remember him? Didn't start with a lap time and qualifying from 48th. Well, he has made very short work of this field. 48th to now 15th position. He doesn't need no lap time in qualifying. Did get a little bit of damage in the process trying to work his way through. Passing that many cars, you almost have to expect to get a little bit of beat and banging in the process. Up ahead of him, we mentioned it earlier, it's uh, uh, Abdesik Butkubute. It looks like he is going to uh, be under threat here in a moment. Especially with the pace the number 62 has been showing. Right on board. Now uh, flowing into turn 8 and then back through the little pine tree. Continues to close down. It's down to 1.1 seconds to Abdesik. So it's probably going to be a matter of time before he can manage to overtake him. A little bit farther down in the mid-pack, 23rd. Very tight, Jack Anderek also side-by-side -side racing behind him. That's where the action is. Neil Sintowski being overtaken by Charles Kellyman. Neil Sintowski's not been having the day he would like. He just come off of the, uh, came off of the weekend Warriors race in the SRF at Road America. And uh, obviously just got overtaken there by the number 67, but he's going to get another shot as they climb up the hill. Let's see if he can manage to make the pass on this one. We didn't miss anything up at the lead. Actually, no, we did. Big changes of position there in the middle of the lead pack. And guess who is continuing to have trouble? It is Juan Fernandez who got swamped there, and he's got more cars looking on either side. It's Brandon Hawken who's going to try and stick his nose in. Fernandez doesn't cover him off, though, interestingly. He was fully clear, and it looks like Hawken didn't get the good enough run down to the Decida del Lago to maybe try and make the pass over a little bit wide. In fact, way wide, all the way off the course for Fernandez. This loses him the position anyways as Hawken goes by. Berger nearly goes by. He's going to be to the outside coming into the horseshoe. Ferdura, a double apexer, very quick corner, third or fourth gear. Berger makes it work around the outside. Impressive stuff there up at the front. All that fighting, though, has meant that Hawkins lost a little bit of touch with Fernando Busquet. He's currently running in sixth position. Now the back of the very top group, hoping to have a breakaway to have fewer cars involved here. Usually these drivers can go roughly 25 minutes on the limited tank that they have for these cars. And this 40 minute race doesn't give them too much of a buffer on either side. We watch them now come up the front stretch. Evan with a little bit of damage on the front of the car. He's got to try and stay with that car ahead. That is uh, Nico Arvalomi. If he loses the draft, that'll be bad news for him. Of course, Bousquet probably won't want to fall too far behind as well. If he sees him losing touch, he'll start making moves. Looks like Hawken caught up a little bit with the draft up the front stretch. 
off of the curve of his soul and back onto the front stretch. Again, your leader is Hartley. Torres running second, Hagner third. Back down in er, 19th position. Ishimaru is trying to attack on Taylor Lane. Ishimaru having qualified in 42nd position as an, is another one that has come a long ways up the field. Big defensive move from Lane. That's going to really compromise his exit. And look behind them, that's George Fike. It looks like Jordy could potentially find himself two positions in one, depending on how hard these two battle. Ishimaru has got the inside down into the horseshoe. Can he complete the job is the question. He's got the grip way wide to the outside for Taylor Lane's going to give that one up. 19th goes to the 38. Oh, Jordy is going to take a risky move down into there, but that doesn't work out. Behind them... There's a big side-by-side -side battle between Sintowski and Lindroth. Lindroth comes out ahead of that one. Just manages to squeak through on the inside of the ninth corner. A wheel spin, though, off the turn there from Lindroth. He's got to be careful with those tires. It might be cooler conditions with the sun going down. Only 82 degrees Fahrenheit on the track surface, which can make them angry. Back to continuing to slide it. And most of these cars in the group slide in a lot. That was Jack Anderek that you saw in that uh, second orange machine there in the number 17, almost sliding off track in the process. As they come up the hill, Lindroth leads them in 22nd, followed by Sensowski in 23rd. A little bit of a look to the inside. That's Kitamura. Oh, and Kitamura is way deep on the brakes. Can he get it woed up? No over under, over under if I could speak, uh, thing, <laughs> over under move from Jack Anderek. But he does manage to get back to his bumper and almost looks like he gave a bump and run there. Luigi slides out to the outside. That's going to put him in a three wide situation. Vostrel is sandwiched in the middle as Erpelding. Looks to the inside of both of them, tries to break deep. They, oh, come together side to side and Kitamura loses more spots. Even one more car going by Greg Savoy up to 27th, Kitamura 28th, a lot lost just in a couple corners. Still up at the front, Hartley leads Torres. There's been no changes since we last looked. Hagner third, Arvalomi. Fourth, Clifford Eben in P5. As they come back onto the front stretch, Bousquet really was running wide, but he was keeping his foot in the throttle. Almost wonder if we'll see any drivers maybe attempt to pit early to get out of this group, see if they can spread themselves apart. Bousquet's actually given a bump draft to Clifford Eben, continuing to try to keep him up with the top group. That does work a little bit in these cars. It doesn't work to a great degree, but it gains you, gains you a tenth or two. All of them staying in line down through the Senate S. They are now within the pit window if anybody wants to take it. Nobody in the front group did. We're keeping an eye on the timing and scoring to see if anybody farther back elects to duck in. Oh, we got one, Peter Vostrel. And I think that's the only one. Yeah, indeed. Nobody else has tried to take an early stop to make it to the end. Now, with this many cars, lap traffic could become a thing, especially if we get these early pitters. You can see the front group is clear of them for the moment. The, the first one up is going to be Sean uh, Treciak. And then it's a little ways up before you get to Brian Zabelski, the next car, next driver up. A little bit of a slide off the corner from Hartley, but we're riding on board with Torres instead, looking back at uh, Yoni Hagner there in third position, shining his lights brightly into the mirrors of Halme. Up to the front stretch one more time and off of the junction. Hartley managed to gap himself slightly 
through the latter half of the lap there. He's starting to look pretty strong, and I'm wondering if that'll help him down the line, especially if he can pull a pit strategy that uh, can give him some space to pull laps on his own. What about this time? Watching to see if any drivers duck in. Nobody in the front group. Next group is led by Pedro Berger. Nobody from there comes in. It's always hard to tell if anybody's going to pit because the racing line takes you right through the pit entry lane. Back out of the curve of the soul. Our lead group goes. Boy, Torres is close this time. Does he want to be aggressive? No, he's going to lift. Torres could be saving fuel. He's been sitting in second place for a good chunk of this first stint. Once they reach 15 minutes to go, pretty much everybody's got to come in. We had one more taker. Adi Hato has uh, taken his car down pit lane. The Finn is down to 35th now. Should uh, return towards the tail end of the field. Let's head back to 12th. Oh, a little bit of touch there between our leaders. So maybe Torres get a little antsy. Back to Pedro Berger. He's got Maxim Bunovic ahead of him. But I almost wonder if Pedro is maybe latched onto the slipstream with Maxim's pace and is just basically riding his coattails. If he is, he's bringing more friends with him. That's Alexander Lukovic with uh, him behind him in the green and purple car. And Julian Villaray back there in the 14th position. Oh, we've had a change up at the front. And I don't think it was a draft pass. I think Hartley must have been a little bit slow coming through the junction because Torres is by. I wonder if we could look at the replay, see how this happened. This is coming through the junction. And oh, he just, just was a little bit too wide. He got off into the grass and that's all it took and he's even lost another spot because up into the first corner, Hagner decided it was time to go. Moved himself into second. Had one of our drivers from up at the front pit, Fernando Busquet, has taken an early stop. Will this pay off for him? He's already done with his fuel. Where will he return? And will it be in clean air? That's the big thing. He doesn't want to get caught up in traffic. He's got a bunch of cars coming up, but he's getting up to speed. Looks like that's Erpelding and Andrick that will be behind him. Good call by Busquet. Timed that to perfection. Back up at the front. How many cars do we have in this group now? Looks like Travis Wallace Running in ninth is the last of them. Been following the progress of Budovich, who we just looked at a little bit ago. He's the next car back. He's in 10th place. wonder if we could... Let's look at the lap comparison between Budovich and the number 62 and the number 13 of Torres, who's leading right now. See if he's actually gaining on the overall leader here. The answer is a firm yes. Look at that. Wow, and a few cases, multiple tenths quicker than the leader. So Bunovic will not only catch this group, he could maybe work his way through the group and challenge Jaume Damas' Torres. Meanwhile, well, Torres actually is going to come in and pit this time. That's going to hand the lead over to Yoni Hagner. Looks like he's got another friend with him. A few more. Berger is in. Fernandez, Wallace as well. So a few drivers thinking they can run a little bit quicker on their own. Everybody down to their stall nicely. Didn't see anybody really miss it this time. Where's Bousquet in all of this? He's just coming up to the Senate S now. Torres. Ooh. Ooh, Torres was long. Three seconds longer than Bousquet. Fernando is actually going to jump him. Torres will come out in what is uh, effectively second of the drivers who have pitted. 
an even longer pit stop for Wallace. Now, did Bousquet, I wonder if Bousquet didn't take tires and the others did in their pit stop. You see the, uh, the difference between them stationary and down the lane. I'll have to send someone to check and see a little bit later if uh, that was a tire stop for everybody except Bousquet. Will that get him the lead? And can he hold the lead uh, if that's the case, if he's on older tires than those around him? Now, this is where it gets interesting. 17 and a half minutes left to go. Yoni Hagner is going to be very, very close to that 25 minute mark, 15 minute mark, really, if he stays out another lap. So does he risk it? Does he try and continue on or does he come in this time? Here we go. What's the call? He's coming in. Everybody coming in except Brandon Hawken. Hawken has saved enough fuel that he can stay out for another lap. Bunovich comes in. Berger does as well. In fact, I'm not seeing anybody really staying out here. Yeah, pretty much everybody is coming down pit lane at this point. Those who have managed to stay out as long as possible. Bou uh, Bousquet is now coming up across the start finish line. Hartley, is Hartley going to be able to get out quickly as well? No, he's going to be behind Bousquet. Wow. Either Fernando, uh, we're, we're hearing that Fernando did not take tires. Either he's managed to save a lot of fuel or he has short fueled it and he is at risk here. Torres did get out ahead of Hartley, but barely. Hartley's followed closely by Hagner, who stuck with him. Now, though Bousquet seems to have broken the draft, I think he's got enough of a gap back to Torres. As we see uh, Hawken on screen, our effective leader for the moment. He's going to hand that away once he comes in and pits. Torres might not be able to catch Bousquet on the draft, but I think Hartley, within about a second of Torres, I think coming up the front stretch, he should reel him back in. As we see if Hawken, well, uh, I don't think it's going to be a matter of seeing if Hawken pits this lap. He will pit this lap. Shouldn't really be able to stay out any longer than this. And there you go. Number 99 takes to pit lane. Bousquet is coming out of the junction right now. The Canadian driver pushing it as hard as he can down to the cones. There's number 22 of Fernando Bousquet. Hawkins is in his stall. Fernando out of Subidos Dos boxes. Looking at most drivers between 17 and 25 seconds taking fuel. Hawkins still stationary. 16 seconds for Brandon Hawkin. Bousquet is coming around. Hawkin is going to come out behind him. But what about Torres? Torres looking like he might be able to come out side by side with Brandon in the number 99. Considering he qualified in 10th, this is a huge jump for him. The fuel saving has served him well. Down the Retta Aposta, up towards the, the Decida de Lago. Hawken just didn't quite have enough pace. He will slot in behind, and he will be third. Wow, great strategy call there from Brandon. They're going to lap the car of Peter Vostrel. It's just going to stay out of their way. So at this point, anybody who is not able to make the jump in the pit stops, you've got to do it on track. The old fashioned way, of just simply overtaking on the pavement. Incredibly, we've still got quite a few cars still running. Looks like roughly 42 of our 50 starters are still out on the track. Quentin Dubois might actually get back out there. He's taking repairs. 
Got some nice action for 32nd place. This is Jack Anderick and Charles Kellyman along with Michael Derby. Three-way battle. They run their way towards the cur uh, the uh, De Cid of the Lago. Kellyman defends slightly with an early entry on Derby, but Derby gets a great exit. Is he going to run out of track? No, he's given space by Kellyman. Kellyman is going to have the inside into Ferradura and a nose ahead. Track position prevails as Derby pulls out of it. Down and through end of the technical second half of the course. Anderick watching the battle behind him probably wants them to keep fighting hard so that he can try and pull away, get himself some breathing space. Twelve minutes left to go on the clock. We're looking at about seven laps left. 18th side-by-side -side action on your screen. That's Ishimaru beating out Neil Sintowski down to the Senate S. Clean pass for him. Up next, it's going to be Christian Lindroth that he has to overtake. And then up at the front. It's not a battle for the lead anymore. It's a battle for second. Torres has got Hawking all over him. And then Robert Hartley, our pole sitter. Let's not forget, he's got raw pace on a single lap. He could be a threat on these two, especially with how savvy Robert has been in these MX-5. We watched him race for uh, quite a while in these cars, so the MX-5 World Tour. Now over here in the Big C's MX-5 Challenge, he continues to prove that he is one of the best on the service. As uh, I like to say, Anybody can go slow in a fast car. Not everybody can go fast in a slow car, and these MX-5s prove that. But there's your proof right there. A little bit wide off the final corner. Brandon Hawken with a mistake. Hartley's going to jump on him. And easily by as they go past Water Tower. So move Hartley now up to third. Another pass behind them. Berger and Wallace swapping places. That puts Nicholas Berger up to ninth now. Uh, there's a little bump draft between them as uh, we ride on board. Now we're going to look at on screen as Berger almost loses control. I think there's some slight contact to the rear of the car. Fernandez, Juan Manuel, who is well up the order. Oh, they make contact. That's going to tip Berger a little bit. He backs out of it, allows Berger to catch control of the car. But still, he's got a better run. So does Wallace. Wallace looking to try and find his way around. Is down to the inside. Juan Manuel Fernandez has gone from second to what is now ninth. And he's looking a little bit rusty up here. Way wide off of the Decida de Lago. They do have live stewards. I wouldn't be surprised if Fernandez maybe got a little bit of a penalty or rag of the finger for that move. Continuing on, oh, and over under. This is looking good. Berger's going to give as good as he takes. And he's going to get right back by, elbowing his way past. Now, as all this has been happening, must have been a mistake or something from Bousquet because that two-second gap has closed down to half a second. Torres has reeled in Fernando, but can he pass him is the question. Oh, and will he be there to pass him? Because it looks like Torres is under threat from Hartley. Robert now making his move up around the outside with a better launch off of the junction. Side by side, they run. And he's going to see if he can catch up to the leader and get that top spot back where he held it for pretty much almost every lap of the first half of the race. Deep to the inside goes Torres. Halme is going to take the spot right back into the Senate S. Top five, all bunched together. You can see just how closely they're fighting. Hagner's the next one back, but already with a run, Torres is not going to wait. He's going to try and go to the inside of Bousquet. He's getting some help with a bump draft behind from Robert Hartley. Bobby wants to see if he can get up to second and not be stuck in third. He gets to the inside of Fernando. Fernando's going to give him space coming off the exit of the Citadel Lago. 
but he's not fully clear quite yet. What's Robert Hartley got underneath him? Can he manage to powerhouse his way around the outside? He's gonna have to do it because still side by side into this double apex right-hander, Fernando Busquet, making him work hard for it. Deep onto the brakes, into the corner, and they come together. I think he got a shove from behind. Busquet, unfortunately, still spins Robert Hartley around. He gets into more drivers. Eben gets spun. Hawken got a piece of it. Now he gets into another car. That's Maxime Bunovic, who had finally caught them. He moves up to fourth place, but severe damage on Hawken has his car limping. Unbelievable. This is where we find the real world, where the drivers stop being polite and they start getting aggressive. And it all started with that little touch, I think, with Bousquet, who got in the back. I think that was Clifford Eben, who touched him ever so slightly and sent him into Robert Hartley. And then it was a chain reaction from there. That is a real shame for those drivers who were doing so well. This promotes uh, Torres to first. Bousquet is now in second. Hagner is now up in third with a big gap back behind Dubunovic, who's still trying to chase down our leaders. Robert Hartley is able to continue despite the spin. He's in fifth position. Arve, Arve Lomi, who we haven't, haven't checked in on a while, he is now in sixth. Berger seventh. And Juan Manuel Fernandez finds himself all the way down to eighth still. Poor Brandon Hawkins has to come in and take his spare car with the suspension damage that he got from a, a battle for the lead to just trying to stay in the top half of the, of the field for him. Whew. Got to catch our breath for a second. Torres, who now has the most comfortable lead he's seen all race long, eight tenths of a second over Bousquet. Fernando could yet reel him back, back in with a good launch off the final corner. When they come across the line, is it going to be three laps to go, I believe? Looks like three left. Back to Hagner, who's holding on to the back of Bunovic. What an incredible run here from the number 62. Just behind them, Robert Hartley dealing with the damage on his car. Probably trying to just stay with the draft. Nico Arvalomi as well has got himself uh, a bit of a problem trying to catch up. He's back by about 1.1 seconds. Speaking of that gap, that's about the same that we're seeing between Fernando Busquet and Jaume Torres. So Busquet unfortunately falling backwards. So we look at uh, the battle for eighth position. That's Juan Fernandez, Travis Wallace, who's gonna lift. So he's not willing to try and get in the mix quite yet. The car behind them is in four position. That's the lapped car of Peter Vostrel. Oh, and there's a car off. That's Liam Sheen. That's another lap car. So. He's just getting out of the way. That uh, battle for third is not over, but Robert Hartley is now applying a lot of pressure because we're riding on board with Yoni Hagner. Looking back at uh, Hartley and seeing just less than a car's, uh, car's length between them, Bit of a look to the inside, down into Ferradura as well from Bobby. But now you can see they're starting to find a lot of lap traffic. That could offer a pit for some of these drivers. That was uh, Hector Goddard that they went by. Wow, Torres is just lightning right now. The number 13 has stretched it in just what, two or three laps here, up to two seconds past Fernando Busquet in the number 22. In fact, uh, Fernando's now been caught by Maxime Bunovic. And I think Maxime is gonna be able to take this second place away pretty easily with how much time he ran down that number 22 car. Looking to the inside, 
Really no defense there from Fernando as well. He's just going to let him through. Maxime's actually even dropped Yoni Hagner. The Finn has not been able to keep up. Second place easily goes to Bunovic. But 2.1 seconds is the gap to Torres. They're going to get the white flag next time by. That is a gigantic ask from the number 62 to go from 48th starting position to try and win this race. Still, he should be happy with a 22nd. Look at that behind them. We got some action between Hagner and Hartley. Maybe not. Hartley backs out of it. He had a little bit of a look down into the Citadel Lago. Off that double apex corner. Down into the Ferradura. Ooh, maybe down into the horseshoe. Nope. But Hartley's getting a little bit antsy. Starting to take some riskier moves on Hagner. Oh, no, it's Hagner as a lap car. No, that wasn't. That was for position. That was Bousquet, who was very slow into the corner. And Hagner absolutely mugged him to take third place. I wonder if Fernando is short on fuel and he's having to save at this point because he's dropping quicker and quicker. Let's ride on board. Let's listen and see if we can hear him lifting a little bit early. Yeah, yeah, he short fueled it. I wondered about that 14 second stop. I don't even know if he's gonna be able to make it to the end here. I certainly will appreciate the draft that he's getting from Hagner now. But up at the front, Torres, you wondered about that gap? Well, it's down to 1.3 seconds. Budovic is coming. He's coming fast. I actually wonder if Torres is also a little bit shy on fuel. White flag waves for both of them. Budovic is coming incredibly quickly, just running up this straight. He cut it down from 1.5 seconds to 0.9. Could he actually do this, going from nearly the tail end of a 50-car field and coming up to win this race? He was an entire second faster just on that lap alone. Maxim Bunovic now has it down to 0.8 of a second. Torres pushing hard to try and take the victory, starting from third place in comparison. Hartley and Hagner battling a little bit between them, but Hagner stays ahead. Hartley can't quite get his nose in. Let's head back to our leaders. It's down to seven tenths of a second now. Torres is being run down hand over fist. This is this has to be closer than seven tenths. It's five tenths of a second now. He's going to have the draft up the front stretch up towards the finish line. Is that going to be enough for Maxime? What does Torres have in the tank of that car too? Four tenths of a second. Down through Murgulo. Up to the junction. This is the moment of truth. Three tenths of a second between them. It's now a drag race to the line. Maxime gets a pretty decent launch, but so does Torres. But it's a question of who has enough fuel. If either one of them sputters, that'll end it between this battle. Four tenths of a second between them. Three tenths of a second. Once again, the 62 gaining as they come to the line. I don't think he's quite click, uh, quick enough, even though he's closing it down as they cross. It is going to be Torres who takes the win by a tenth of a second. Hagner and Hartley also incredibly close, and it is going to be Hagner who rounds out the podium. More drivers coming through. Some closely, some not. Berger going to round out our top 10. Very close down for 13th between Albert and Sharp. But it looks like Sharp is not going to be able to beat Albert. Brandon Hawken. After his disaster, he comes back 16th just ahead of George Fike. And a string of cars crossing with them. Gareth Broxelby, Brocklesby in the number 303 being chased by Charles Kellerman. Kellerman gets the draft, but he doesn't get enough of it. He winds up finishing in what looks like uh, 40 first position, a couple laps down even. That should be pretty much everybody on the lead lap. 
Let's take a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. Stick around because you'll see all the upcoming races here on screen. back to Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, better known to race fans as Interlagos. We just watched round four in Dixie's MX-5 Challenge. Jaume Dalmas's Torres took the win, but he started in third place on the grid. Maxim Bunovic that you see there, only a tenth behind, actually less than a tenth behind. He started from 48th. He didn't even qualify and made a monster run. Yoni Hagner took the round out of the podium. Uh, Robert Hartley just behind, unfortunately, almost spun around with a late race incident. A bunch of cars kind of coming together, but mostly a racing deal between them. Just hard racing, and he did get fourth. Nico Arvalomi finished P5. Fernando Antoli Busquet was sixth, and he's followed by Nicholas Berger in the seventh position. Juan Manuel Fernandez finishes eighth. Travis Wallace finishes ninth in the top ten, is rounded out by Pedro Berger. Alexander Lukovics did get up to 11th. Shoichi Ishimaru went from 42nd himself up to 12th on the grid. Alex Albert as well, 27th to 13th. Then it's James Sharp who had a little bit of a backwards run in comparison from 5th to 14th. Julian Villaray finishes 15th and Brandon Hawken. Unfortunately, despite some great strategy, just caught the bad luck of the wreck and wound up in 16th. George Fike was 17th and Neil Santowski 18th. Alex Cofford finished P19 with Christian Lindroth in the 20th position. Last few cars on the lead lap are Ari Haro in 21st, Simon Erpelding in 22nd, Rui Coimbroth 23rd, Jonas Seeger in 24th, and Greg Savoy in 25th. Uh, Piotr uh, Margula, Thomas Geisler, Clifford Evan, 
uh, Zabolik Prem, Jack Endrick, and Paul Barbuza were the last drivers to finish on the lead lap. Everybody else was a lap down from there. It was a great race today. It was some exciting stuff, absolutely spectacular uh, between the drivers. And uh, they are fighting for some great prizes. A GTF simulator goes to the first place finisher in the uh, championship. Second place is going to get a new shifter. And then, of course, a minus, two, a two, minus 273 racing gloves uh, will be finishing in third place. But looks like we don't really have anybody ready to talk to us here at the end. So I'm not sure that we'll be able to to get any interviews unfortunately in this uh, turning point uh, post race show we uh, would also of course like to thank uh, gtr simulator and sim racing studio turn racing and minus 273 for sponsoring today's racing action as well as the series title sponsor big c we would oh and it looks like we did get someone coming in just before we were going to close things up yoni hagner coming in for a podium interview from third place. So let's talk to Yoni a little bit about that race. Yoni, it uh, looked like it was a lot of sitting and waiting for the first half, and then, boy, did it erupt in the after the pit stops. Yeah, I didn't have just enough pace to like be on the front, so I tried to save a bit of fuel. And, uh, yeah, trying to learn this uh, new time model at the same time, so... Yeah, it was a uh, quite hard race for me. You were helped a little bit too by the kerfuffle that happened after the pit stops or a few cars got spun around, some with damage. What was your view of that as you were coming up on it? Uh, Hartley was sideways and hit someone and he hit someone and there was a like gap for me. <laughs> so it was good for me. So yeah, <laughs> lucky certainly is we see you a lot up at the front of the uh the camel gt series how much of being quick in that car translates over here to the mx5 both of them are not necessarily known for a whole lot of grip uh well the older tire model it was uh, actually quite the same but uh uh much that you need to like uh, give more momentum the break point breaking stuff is quite the same and uh, exit. It certainly seems to have served you well as uh, you did very good in what is an incredibly talented field out there. Is there anybody you'd like to thank before we let you go? Yeah, I'd like to thank the uh, off-track racing crew uh, for being nice company for the race. Awesome stuff. Well, thanks for coming and talking to us. Looks like you're the only one friendly enough to come and give us an interview. Uh, so best of luck next week, and hopefully we'll get to talk to you some more. As we uh, close things out, we're going to thank a few people. We mentioned a lot of the sponsors here that help us out. GTR Simulator, Sim Racing Studio, Turn Racing, and Minus 273. But also thanks to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen. Additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get hold of more of her great work. And, of course, thanks to our team today, Sean Ambrose and Dougie Beard. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. Or check out our social media. On Twitter, it's GSR Channel. Facebook is Global Sim Racing Channel. And Instagram is GSRC underscore Gram. Of course, we've also got that competition going on. Well, not competition, more of a draw, a free drawing. Uh, if you subscribe to GSRC, make sure and do so, and you are a, a free enter, a free entry, excuse me, into a drawing for a, your choice of one item from our merchandise store. If you want to check out that store and see what's uh, uh, there for sale, there's a link below in the YouTube description. Uh, YouTube description. We are going to be back uh, in a week's time and uh, double checking to see what our next track is going to be. Looks like we are at Lime Rock Park, so much tighter confines. If we get 50 cars there, it will certainly be hectic. 
We have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.